Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about some of the books coming out in 2023, yes 2023, that I am the most excited for. Now there are bound to be more books that I am A going to remember <laughs> and B going to learn about between now and even the beginning of the year but these are the ones that are on my mind right now these are some of the ones um that i already have or maybe pre-ordering and some that i really think that you would be interested in and wanted to tell you about so yeah you know what to expect from an anticipated releases video i don't need to tell you what's happening here before we get into the books however i would like to say a massive thank you to the sponsor of today's video so Ana luisa are a carbon and water neutral jewelry brand who create some of my absolute favorite pieces they have supported this channel in the past and i'm always very very happy to talk more about them because I do love their products that much as well as their ethos. Their focus as a brand is on using recycled metals and materials to create long lasting pieces of jewellery that people are going to wear for a lifetime and I have to say that every piece of jewellery I've ever had from Ana Luisa has been of the highest quality and they've slowly taken over my jewellery collection which is no bad. I love showing off my Ana Luisa pieces in these videos which as you can see I am wearing today. I actually have a pair of silver hoops on today which I think makes a nice change because I am usually wearing gold but I'm also somebody who greatly believes in mixing metals. It's an approach I take to everything I wear. I love mixing colours, I love mixing patterns, I love mixing metals. For me personally my style doesn't mean wearing one colour of jewellery, one colour of metal in my jewellery and I love when I can mix and match all of my pieces. Like if I like it separately I wholly believe I'm going to like it together. So I really love these little silver hoops. I think they're really really classic and I'm also wearing some of their rings right now. So first we have one of their individual rings which is set with the most adorable little like star design. It feels very celestial and I love that. And then we have a set of their stacking rings which again I love that you can buy in a set because I love the look of stacked rings but it can take a while to collect them up so it's nice to just be able to pick up a little set which all look lovely individually and all look lovely together so I'm in love with my new pieces and I'm really grateful to both have been sent them by Ana Luisa and also for Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video and if you are interested in checking Ana Luisa out I will have them linked in the description box down below you can also use my code to get 20% off which will be on the screen right now as well as in the description box so thanks again to Ana Luisa and now let's take a look at the books I am going to go through these books in as close to chronological order as possible. Dates are subject to change, this is based entirely on the UK publishing dates that I'm aware of but even within the UK this might change. It does give you a rough estimate though, an idea of when you can pre-order these books for. So starting in January, the first book on this list will probably come as no surprise and is also probably on a ton of most anticipated releases but for good reason and that is The Stolen Air, a novel of Elfheim by Holly Black. So this is the sequel or beginning of a new sequel series to the original Elfheim series by Holly Black which began with The Cruel Prince. This is a YA fantasy series with an underlying romance plot that is set in a very cruel dark version of the fae world that takes inspiration from a lot of traditional folklore and the way that fairies are depicted in it. We followed a mortal girl Jude in the original series as well as the fae prince Cardin. We are now in the sequel series following Jude's youngest sibling who is basically a toddler in the original series and this is one you're probably only going to be picking up if you've read the original trilogy so I probably don't need to talk about what that exactly was about. However, I am super excited for this. I had no idea Holly Black had plans for a second series set in this world but I am so here for it because I just found the Cruel Prince series the most page-turning, entertaining, fun 
series of novels. They're not everyone's cup of tea and I completely get that, but I found them super compelling and fun to read. So returning to that world is something I am absolutely here for and I'm really intrigued to follow the plot of these which, like I said, appear to be around Jude's youngest sibling who's now a teenager and he lives in the mortal world, although he is a fae, as well as a fae princess from a neighbouring kingdom, I believe, and one who gets stuck in the mortal world and perhaps how the, their lives intersect. At least that's the, like the initial premise, that's where we start off the story. I don't know where it's going to go from there, but I'm sure it's going to be fun. And then we move on to February, which I actually have three books for, so a few more than in January. And the first one is The Heroines by Laura Shepherdson. Although this may be published as Phaedra in the US, I'm a little bit confused because both titles are online and on different book selling websites. So for now I'm going to call it The Heroines but it may also be published as Phaedra in the US so double check and I will obviously link it down below but this is a retelling of the Greek myth of Phaedra specifically based on the ancient Greek play Hippolytus written by Euripides which goes in depth into the story of Phaedra the wife of Theseus who accuses Theseus's son Hippolytus of sexual assault. And the consequences of that, and really interestingly, I don't think I've ever really come across a modern retelling of this myth, so I think it's gonna be super interesting. I don't know what approach the author is gonna to take to this myth, but I really like to see lesser retold myths approached in the first place, so I'm really excited to see what she does. So I'm pretty much here for any Greek myth retellings, but when it's something that I've never seen retold before or not seen retold often, I'm extra excited. We then have Gwen and Art are not in love by Lex Croucher. Now this is Lex's third novel set in a historical era and this one in particular follows a princess who is gay and a duke who is gay but who have been betrothed to one another from birth and are now starting to realise that they're not attracted to each other, in fact they're attracted to the same sex as opposed to the opposite sex and they're hiding this from everybody else because this is, as I said, a historical period novel whilst also kind of falling in love with other people and basically being each other's beards. I don't know how it's going to pan out, I don't know if this is a kind of novel where it's going to um, take some leniency with the reactions of people to the characters coming out or if they have to find some way to kind of live within society without coming out fully to everybody but I love that Lex writes these really comedic historical novels that also touch on real experiences and real feelings that would have been going on at the time but you don't see talked about in historical novels so much. People weren't just <laughs> magically all heterosexual <laughs> in a time period when it was also frowned upon or illegal. They were also gay and it's really nice to see some gay rep in historical fiction and I love Lex's sense of humour so I can't wait for this one. Then lastly for the month of February, quite aptly actually, is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Choksi. Sorry I keep messing that title up so I just read it for from um, my Word document there. Now this is one of the few books in this video where I'm going to read the blurb to you because I just don't feel like I can say anything more interesting than what the blurb says. The blurb is very much what ended this book up on my list so I'd like to share it with you. It's described as a sumptuous gothic story about an obsessive female friendship cursed to end in tragedy, a marriage unraveled by dark secrets and the danger of believing in fairy tales. Once upon a time, a man who believed in fairy tales married a beautiful, mysterious woman named Indigo, Maxwell Castaneda. He was a scholar of myths. She was an heiress to a fortune. They exchanged gifts and stories and believed they would hap <laughs> and believed they would live happily ever after. And in exchange for love, Indigo extracted a promise that her bridegroom would never pry into her past. But when Indigo learns our estranged aunt is dying and the couple is forced to return to her childhood home, the house of dreams, the bridegroom soon finds himself unable to resist, for within the crumbling manor's extravagant rooms and musty halls there lurks the shadow of another girl, Azure, Indigo's dearest childhood friend who disappeared without a trace. Now, I love me anything with fairy tale themes and I also love a kind of dark, gothic, mystery thriller, particularly set in a more historical or fairy type, fairy tale type era. So that is something it sounds like this book is going to do and it sounds like it's going to do it beautifully. So I can't wait. I'm already intrigued. In March, I again only have one book to talk about, but it is 
another Greek myth retelling. You're bound to see a ton of those on any anticipated releases video I do. I just finished a PhD in ancient Greek history, what can I say? <laughs> and this one in particular is Clytemnestra's Bind by Susan Wilson, who is in fact a Scottish author, which is always fun to discover new Scottish authors whilst I'm at it as well. So Clytemnestra's Bind is probably quite self-explanatory from the title. It is a retelling of the myth of Clytemnestra, who is the wife of Agamemnon, who sacrificed their daughter during the Trojan War, and who Clytemnestra in turn murders because of this. It's a myth I'm actually seeing more retellings of. It's a myth I'm seeing a few retellings of come out, um, or at least that include the perspective of Clytemnestra in the past year or two. But it's a myth that I really, really like, and Clytemnestra is a figure of mythology I really really enjoy reading about so I'm super excited to see um, what Susan Wilson does with her character in this novel. Next up is April and we do have another Greek myth retelling so I'll mention that one first quickly and it's Atalanta by Jennifer Saint. You may know Jennifer Saint as the author of Electra and Ariadne. She has taken the world of Greek myth retellings by storm over the past couple of years and she's a really wonderful author so I can see why this naturally is a retelling of the Atalanta myth and Atalanta is hands down one of my favourite characters of mythology. She was one of the characters of mythology I enjoyed writing about the most in my first children's book, Greek Myths. I was so excited to um, share that myth because I felt like not as many people knew it and I'm so pleased to see more retellings of it because I'm not aware of very many. I've read one other one um, in the past which was Outrun the Wind by Elizabeth Tammy and this and if you don't know Atlana is one of the very few female heroines of Greek myth in terms of her fulfilling a role much more similar to male heroes. Obviously there's plenty of heroines, there's plenty of lead female characters in Greek mythology but there's very few um, warrior women of a mortal disposition. They're not goddesses and that's what Atalanta is. She is abandoned as a baby raised by a bear and becomes this ultimate warrior, incredibly fast runner, skilled with a bow and arrow, really, really epic kick-ass girl, and I am really excited to see more retellings of her. Then we actually have a comic book bind-up. So it is the first bind-up volume of Alice Ever After, which is the first four issues, or first five? First four or five issues, I forget now, of the Alice Ever After comic book series. And if you know me, you know I read my comic books in bind-ups. I very, very rarely read individual issues of comics because I find that kind of unsatisfying. I need more than just an issue at a time and I hate waiting for the next one to come out. So I wait for the bind-ups, which usually, like I said, bring together four or five issues and I've been waiting to read Alice Ever After for this bind up. So I'm really, really excited for it to come out. It's a comic book series which is basically a sequel to Alice in Wonderland. Alice is now all grown up and it's about what happens next, which sounds brilliant. I also think the art looks gorgeous. Now me, I have to confess, I am particularly excited about because I do have some books coming out myself. I actually have two books coming out in May on the same day, May 25th, which are edited volumes in the Macmillan Collectors Library series. So if you don't know, the MCL Collectors Editions are published by Pan Macmillan here in the UK and they are these lovely little editions of classics but they also do bind up editions of say short stories by women of the Harlem Renaissance or different love poetry or different Scottish writing or all the best Sherlock Holmes stories, that's one of my favourites. They bring together um, classics in new ways as well as um, providing new introductions to classic novels and I really really love these little books and I'm super excited to say that I have actually edited two which was so much fun. I had so much fun working on this project and they're coming out at the same time, one of which is Greek myths, heroes and heroines, and the other of which is Greek myths, gods and goddesses. And these are both collections of Georgian, Victorian and Edwardian um, retellings of Greek myths. So they're actually anthologies collecting together a ton of different authors, including people like Nathaniel Hawthorne, um, who wrote Greek myth retellings back in their day because there was a massive appetite, particularly in the sort of late 1700s, all throughout the 1800s and early 1900s for these stories. They've never gone out of fashion and every generation I think does something new with these stories um, but also manages to keep 
the originals alive in doing that, which I love. And that's what these authors did. So I edited these volumes to bring together some of my favourite retellings from this era as well as the ones I felt were most accurate to the originals so that you could pick these volumes up and get a kind of beginner's guide to Greek myths and some of the more well-known Greek myths but also some of the lesser known Greek myths and each volume includes an introduction from myself as well as um, smaller introductions and pieces of commentary on each story itself. So I'm really proud of these, I think they collect together some really really interesting stories and really really interesting versions of the Greek myths that like I said I feel are in keeping with the originals while also being entertaining. So naturally I'm very excited for them to be out there in the world and for those of you who do pick them up I really really hope you enjoy them. There are two more books I'm excited for coming out in May though and the first one is Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang and this is actually a thriller novel which sounds so interesting. It's about two young women who work in publishing, one of whom is a bit of a literary sensation. But she dies, um, she dies at the very beginning of the novel and our protagonist then decides to steal her work. So she has her unpublished manuscript and she decides to pass it off as her own. And from what I understand, ends up Asian fishing as part of this because um, she is white um, and the manuscript is not about um, a white character. So I don't know what to expect from this book. I don't know if we're also going to be following the mystery of how the original writer and author of this novel died or if it's just going to be about how this other woman descends into this ridiculous um, facade, um, falsifying this book as her own. I don't know, but it sounds really, really interesting. I've not read a thriller quite like it. Then we have Warrior Girl Unearthed by Angelina Boulay, and this is another one that is a thriller. There is a plot line going on in the background about lots of missing women, um, but it's actually one I'm mainly interested in because of the other plot, which is um, that a teenage girl ends up on a university campus and learns um, that there are artifacts from her um, indigenous tribe in this museum and she wants to get them back to her tribe, so she tries to go through the proper channels but isn't able to because of all these like fences she has to jump and loopholes that they've put into the laws. So she and some other young people decide to go about planning a heist in order to return these artifacts to where they belong. And I love that this book is dealing with the issue of museums and universities sort of like wrongfully holding artifacts that don't belong to them, that they got through nefarious circumstances and that it's addressing that issue in fiction and to have yourself as the reader brought into these conversations. So I'm really, really glad. So I'm super excited for this because I've never read um, a thriller or a novel really that deals with this issue in that way and I'm a great believer of um, returning artifacts to their proper homes. So I'm really, really excited to read this one. We're then skipping over June because at this moment in time there's nothing on my list that comes out in June and going straight for July, which brings us to my second piece of news, which is that my third children's book with DK will also be out in July of 2023. So I am so excited about this. Of course I'm excited. What's not to be excited about? It's something I'm very proud of and something I loved, loved writing and seeing the illustrations um, develop around. So this is Goddesses and Heroines, which is all about more than 80 mythological women from around the world. And what this book does is rather than look at one mythology, like my Greek myths book did or my Egyptian myths book did, is that it looks at women in myth from around the world through certain themes and characterizations. So there's a section on goddesses, there's a section on magical creatures, and there's a section on mortals. And then within these chapters, you get subsections on mermaids and water spirits, on goddesses of love and war, on queens and princesses, on fairies and nature spirits, on goddesses of death, on warrior women, and many, many more. And I love that I was able to sort of show how certain mythological themes, like for example, mermaids are sort of all around us, they, they go all over the world and how different cultures interpret those magical beings and those magical and mythical women. And then for each of those subsections where I do introduce a number of women from different mythologies all the way from like 
Aztec to ancient Egyptian, from Chinese to Finnish, and like I said, many, many more from around the world, you get to actually read some of those myths themselves. So it actually includes, for example, the story of Baba Yaga, or the story of Tuanatar, or the story of Hathor, or the story of Alcestes. There are so many women in this book, and I loved writing it. Once again, the primary age demographic of this book, like with my other children's books, is the seven to 11 year old category. They're meant to be like fun, accessible, but also educational educational and informative and I'm really really excited for this one to to join the series to be out there in the world and hopefully for children and potentially some adults to enjoy and learn from it so yeah super duper excited about that and it's once again illustrated by the incredible Katie Ponder. But next up we come to August in which I have one book to talk about and that is Tastes Like Shakar by Nisha Sharma and this is the sequel to Dating Dr. Dill, but it's one of those sequels where it's basically like its own standalone book because it is a romance novel and there is this um, tendency within the romance genre, which I'm sure you're aware of if you read a lot of romance, to write series where each book in the series follows a different character, but say from the same family or same friendship group. So you can read them by themselves, you can read them out of order, or you can read them from one, two, three, etc. And like with Dating Dr. Dill, this one's actually inspired by a Shakespeare play. So this one is a retelling of Much Ado About Nothing, and it is about two of the characters who we meet in book one, who are friends of the love interests in book one, and who are now about to enjoy their own romance plot. I say enjoy with uh, <laughs> quotation marks because it sounds like it's going to be very antagonistic, but a lot of fun. Um, these books are sort of light enemies to lovers um, based on book one and the blurb of book two and I really enjoyed book one. It was a great great fun Shakespeare retelling of the Taming of the Shrew uh, with two very modern very um, engaging protagonists I was very invested in. So naturally I'm super excited to read something else by this author as well as something about friends that I first encountered in book one. And then lastly we actually jump to October with the final book on this list. Yes it definitely peters off as we get to the later half of the year because less books um, for the second half will have been announced so far but I do have one for you and that is Silverborn by Jessica Townsend. So this is the fourth book in the Nevermore series which follows a young girl called Morrigan Crow. Book one is in fact called The Trials of Morrigan Crow and it is probably my favourite current ongoing middle grade series. It is so much fun. Like I love this series. This this series is, I think, like one of the top tier um, middle grade books right now for all ages. And I say that with no expectation that middle grade be written for adults. Like I don't think adults have to be able to enjoy children's books. Like that's not the point of them. Their demographic is children. But as an adult, it's always nice when I can also enjoy them. That's just like a bonus, isn't it? And I do really, really enjoy these books because they're very complex, I feel like. There's a lot of world building. It's really, really interesting, everything that's going on, and there's these overarching mysteries that I'm heavily invested in, as well as like character development and um, sort of like familial and friendship relationships that are building that I love. And I also feel like there is quite a lot of suspense and like moments of like creepiness in these books which I never expected but have started to sort of grow as they've gone on like the books themselves I feel like are growing as I read them and I love that I think these books are spectacular they're set in a magical world where our character Morrigan Crow ends up when she is whisked away from a prophecy that would have had her die on her 11th birthday and is instead um, asked to join uh, the society for people with special gifts and they're just fantastic so of course I'm excited for book four I've been waiting for far too long for this book not that um that's a criticism of the author these things take time but oh I can't wait for it <laughs> I want it now but yeah that brings me to the end of my list of most anticipated releases for 2023 like I said I have no doubt this list will continue to grow even within 24 hours of uploading this video because I'm hoping you're gonna let me know about your most anticipated releases in the comments down below and I can add a few more of those to my own list. So yeah, let me know what you're looking forward to coming out and if you're looking forward to any of the books that I've mentioned and uh, why. But in the meantime, another massive thank you to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video and supporting this channel. They will 
will be linked in the description box down below and don't forget to use your code to get a discount and until next time happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye everybody!